Okay, the Modern Eater Show continues. We're outsourcing delicious Colorado food right now for summer dinner series. It's going to be Chef Jesusia Silva's dinner, and uh, Chef's with us right now. Hello, everybody. Thank you for having me. I'm here. Uh, Jay Parker, Brian Freeman, myself, Greg Hollenbach, catching up with Mike Harper at Harper Feeders in Eaton, Colorado, man. Speaking of Eaton, we want to get Eaton some of this yeah. lamb, man. I'm ready for you, too. All right, so we're uh, just doing a little tour around the lot is the way we would call it, huh? Yep, around the feed lot. What kind of uh, animals are we looking at here? These are these are crossbreds. You'll notice the, the, some what I call a brockle face, multicolored, white, uh, white and brown for the most part. They're probably crossed with a Columbia or Rambouillet U, which would be in a white face breed with a Suffolk or a Hampshire buck. And that's what creates that crossbred, and that also creates hybrid vigor, which which gives them good growth capacity and and good feeding capacity. Uh, n- nice chunky monkeys here. How? What are you feeding <laughs> these? <guys? laughs> we start we start most of the animals off on a high roughage ration, uh, which would be uh, ground hay number one. You would have uh, corn silage uh, would be the second roughage that we use that we grow here on our own place and, and we ensile every season. And then uh, we incorporate some wet distiller's grain for protein, which comes from the uh, ethanol industry. And uh, of course, corn is still the basis of our ration in a normal instance. I mean, when, we, when we're able to, to feed normally, we, we always incorporate a, a level of corn. And then as we move them up on feed, we increase the percentage of corn and we we lower the roughage, and uh, that's basically what we finish them on. That's what, what, how you get your grain-fed flavor that, that a lot of people really enjoy. I love the taste of lamb. What about you, Chef? That's one of my favorite proteins, to be honest to you. And, uh, yeah, man, this beautiful farm. Uh, so many of these delicious things walking around. <laughs> <laughs> it know. makes you hungry. Very. What makes you hungry? Last time I see you're constantly cleaning and rotating. That's yes. the name of the game, right? Yeah. Clean and rotate. We, we are, uh, I, I want, uh, number one, the animals have to be comfortable. I had a, had a conversation with Brian earlier about the health and well-being and, and managing and stress, and, and you want to minimize all stress in this kind of an environment, at least as much as you can. Yeah, we like those happy, healthy yeah, animals. Happy, healthy animals. And it, it does translate into the meat, Absolutely, it? it does. Some of these, that first pen that you looked at were shorn here. Uh, it was more of a necessity. They came out of an environment that, that they had picked up a lot of seed. Uh, it's a feed that they feed in, in the Mojave Desert, and if you don't if you don't get it away from them, if you don't get it off of them, it will eventually poke through their hide and, and when you harvest that animal, you may find that seed under the skin. Wow. So, so being good stewards and, and good feeders, we bit the bullet. Now understand the wool market is almost as bad as the lamb market right now. And we can't even get anybody to buy our wool. But we had, to sh- we had to shear it off of them so that they would get that seed away from them and they would, they would be happier. And it makes all the difference in the world. It's just like you guys when you get a fresh haircut, man. You're the cock of the walk. You're out running around, <laughs> chest is Completely puffed out, and, true. and they're looking for groceries and they're ready to go. You know. <laughs> All right, let's talk food because uh, folks are going to be joining us. I think it's the 28th of July. Isn't that your birthday? Hey, so my birthday is July 26, and I'm doing that there on the 28th. Uh, it's going to be a party. So you got yeah, man. One day to heal up. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> so we do. Palooza the same day as uh, the nice. dinner. I like it. That's, that's <laughs> I like it. It's a big thing. <laughs> so, so what do you want to do with these uh, delicious lamb? Well, I'm planning to do some binchotan grill with... Uh, you better uh, go slow and describe this. Binchotan is a Japanese uh, charcoal. Uh, if, if it burns a really high temperature. Edamame and uh, wasabi mashed potatoes and do is some a baiting uh, thing going on over here what's no, going on here are they, no are they upset they're just playing they're playing yep. something to do yep sorry chef no no i, no, I thought fine. either something was going to get no, beat up or mated with well, no, they're, that's, they're looking that's at, the way my two 
Constantly. <laughs> they're looking at you pretty hard. <laughs> I know they are. They're watching Greg pretty it's hard now. the other way around. I got my eye on you, too. <laughs> Back <laughs> off me, pal. <laughs> so here's an example of those lambs that we're shorn. Yeah. See how short that skin is? But hey, uh, shorn or sheared? So obviously well, shorn, huh? We call them shorn as in past tense. Uh, sheared or shorn. That's a shorn lamb. I'm going to say what you say. You've been out here doing this a while. How many years you been doing this, Mike? I've been out. That's a good question, Greg. I've been here since. Uh, I mean, you're not that. Old. I've got pictures. I've got pictures of me across the road putting posts in when I in, in the late '70s. Have you done this most of your life? I know your old yes. man was in the business yes. too. Huh? Grew up in it. Yeah. Same Grew property right here. Yep. Pretty much. What did what it looked like when you were a boy running around? This was here. farm ground. Yeah. Because we started on the other side of the road. Oh wow. And then as we as we built up and got better at what we were doing this farm came available my dad bought it and the first thing we did was was uh put some more pens up you've seen a lot of change oh. in colorado exactly you know when i was a kid back in the early 70s when my dad came out here there was still all this ground up here there wasn't a, there were, the homes and the people weren't here mm. so the farmers that were here all had fence and my dad would buy lambs off the mountain on the western slope or wherever. And he would come up to these farmers and he would place inventory with these farmers. He would sell them two or three loads of lambs. And they might have two or three loads of cattle. And they, everybody had pasture and they, they, they pastured lambs through the winter. And then he would go back in the winter when the feed was, the outside feed was eaten up and he would buy them back. And they would take them to plant. But as time went on, everybody gets more specialized and farming practices got more efficient. Mm -hmm. You didn't have the waste. The waste from, from harvest is typically where these guys would create a, a, an opportunity because then you could buy lambs or cattle and you could put them out on those crops and you get something out of it. Yep. But as, as farming has gotten more and more efficient, like most things, there, there's no waste. There's not the level of waste that there once was so there's not as much feed. So it kind of creates a situation where if you're going to be in the business, you have to put the feed up and you have to bring the animals in and you have to feed them in a confinement situation. You know, I, the taste of lamb, it's hit or miss with some people, which I don't understand because I, I actually, I'm on the spectrum of loving it, yeah. right? Um, so they say goat, the number one animal that's eaten in the world, is that by volume, I guess you would say, rather than by per capita? Anyway, lamb being uh, not up there. So Colorado actually likes themselves some lamb. We like some lamb here in Colorado. But it's an interesting thing is, you know, we saw with COVID changing the model of getting, uh, you know, as a rancher, you, your animals to market. So utilization, and this is where, Chef, you can jump in with this, wants to be able to get these into the hands of chefs that'll say hey listen i'll commit to you because i want to get in on a on a full lamb and you, but you got to utilize the whole damn thing right, right? so i i guess uh the question will be like if i want to do a special dinner with a whole lamb how i can come to you and say hey, mr mike i want to buy a lamb and start getting the direct connection with the chefs and you know and start funny you should ask it is funny yeah, yeah. i mean that's the that's what i'm that's been our goal uh, chef is to get into that position and and our family with two other families have uh, invested in a new facility a brand new harvest facility in Brush Colorado mm. that's due to open we've been working on this for two and a half years it's due to open at the end of August and at that point in time we'll have USDA inspected mm. lambs ready for sale congratulations nice. that's and awesome. you know what that really means it means that you control everything from soup to nuts man from the beginning to the market and by doing that it's really going to put your family stamp on this product it's going to show you're going to have the it, your ethics with raising animals it's going to follow through all the way to the end consumer and i'm so excited for you to be able to control that whole chain and uh, the sky's the limit at that point and i'm excited for the story the, the story of the fact that we've been in this business for for since 1974 my dad started feeding lambs in 78 79 over here and we've been in our whole lives i got my oldest daughter's back from college and she's working with us now so we've got multiple generations 
invested in this business and we're, we're still passionate about it. This is another big step for us, but I think it's, you know, when you can bring people out like Chef and, and Brian and everybody and get to see from the ground up yep. what you do every day, well, where it's coming from. We've, one of the partners in, in this project is a, is a rancher from the Western Slope. You talk about a trip up to that country in, in September to see you know, the fall colors and the sheep coming down off the, the grass. It's probably a little prettier than what we're looking at today. Mm -hmm. uh, I enjoy it when I get a chance to go over there. But again, like we talked earlier, because of the, the, the uh, way this industry is shaped up, this is needed. If you're going to maintain quality product 52 weeks a year, you're going to have to have a feeding program of Consistent some kind. Consistent quality product. <laughs> All right, let's stop this truck. Let's hop out. Let's end this thing. We'll get in front of Jay Parker's camera and say to you, uh, bid you adieu from Eaton, Colorado. And uh, just outside of Greeley, huh, Mike? Yes, about n north of Greeley, about eight miles. In any one of these pens, you're probably somewhere around 1,400 to 1,500 head currently. Uh, the feedlot capacity one time would hold as many as 65 to 70,000 lambs. And if you're going to see it at that time of the year, and it's, it's pretty impressive to see it if you have the opportunity, it would be sometime the 1st of October. Classic Brian Freeman. We were wrapping it up. He had to go into interview mode again, but we're here. He's out of the whole crew. This is Summer Dinner Series Chef. It's the 28th, man. We're going to continue celebrating your birthday yes. Tuesday. Please come and join us. Jesus Apalooza and the 28th. Awesome. You, what? you will be eating this delicious lamb. Mike Harper will be at the dinner with his lovely wife. We love hosting you. Tickets on sale. SummerDinnerSeries.com. SummerDinnerSeries.com. <laughs> SummerDinnerSeries.com. <laughs> SummerDinnerSeries.com. Yes, come join us for dinner. We love you. And the Modern Eater Show will hit you back down the road.